Uh, so, but I just wanna, I spoke a little bit with Daniel Bard, uh, about state of the bullpen, and um, would you say with all the young guys you had last year, the addition of column A, that the bullpen overall is probably trending upward? I would think so. Uh, you know, that's, you know, my expectation. Uh, pitching coach's expectation, and I think more importantly, the player's expectation. I think, uh, you know, where most of the guys are now in their career, and I'll Colome, Bard, uh, Stevez, Kinley, right? Four, uh, <clears throat> even though Kinley doesn't have maybe the service time that the other guys do, but, you know, his maturity, where he is age wise, uh, you know, that group. And then surrounded by younger pitchers, Gilbreth, potentially Bowden, Sheffield, Lawrence, Fernandez, uh, guys with good arms. It's it's a nice mix. So uh, I sense this year, to your words, trending upwards. And you gotta like how the young guys responded in the second half last year. Pretty much everyone yeah. was better in the second yeah, half. Yeah, they were. I thought you know overall they pitched better. Uh, from about June on, and that's a good sign. So, uh, again, every you know, every day, every game's a test. You know, for all players, uh, you know, they're going to get opportunities. Spring training and during the season, uh, you know, whoever breaks with the team, right, initially is going to get those opportunities, and then we'll see how the season plays out. But you know, I feel now we have some. We have some depth as far as like quality arms, like legit fastballs, legit secondary pitches. So, uh, you know, that's where you want to be. So if you have to go to the minor leagues, you sort of know what you're getting and you know you're getting a big league arm. That, that was something that, that Bart mentioned is that not everyone's going to make the bullpen, but right. those that don't are going to be that much more experienced when they do come up. Sure. They've, they've, had a, they've had a taste of it. You know, the names that I've mentioned. And they'll be better off for it. Now, there's some things, obviously, if they don't make the team, that means there's probably some things they need to clean up and, and polish uh, in AAA. But, uh, you know, we hope that occurs, that they can, you know, find consistency or, you know, whether it's within their delivery, whether it's their, uh, you know, their, their pitches, just to, you know, when they do come back, they're ready to, ready to contribute. Last year, Lucas, oh, that's one. Lucas obviously is the you know, top lefty in the pen right now. Do you think you need to have a, a second lefty? Well, you don't necessarily need one. There, you like to, right? You like to have the balance, and you know, you like to have, uh, you know, major league quality left-handed pitchers. You just don't want to get a lefty to have a lefty, but you know, they got to be quality. Uh, who, you know, in most cases are tough on left-handed hitters, right? I mean, you know, it's just stats will tell you that. Uh, most hitters are better against the off-handed pitcher. So, left on left, right on right, you like to have you like to have that balance. So, but if I mean if we don't have it, we don't have it. We have some guys who do well against lefties. Kinley uh, had a, what we call a reverse split, where he was really good against lefties last year. So, that works too. With the new rules, having to have 13 pitchers only, is that going to be a challenge for you guys? Because last year you guys had 14 usually. Uh, I think in April, Daniel, I think there's going to be a little bit of a, a break. Uh, is that official? No. 13 13? Oh, 13 13 is, yeah. It is? Once we get into May? I've heard both, but I, think you, I, I do think you're correct. Mm -hmm. No, we'll we'll handle it. We'll handle the thirteen. What does that mean? You're looking at more of like, like if Kachatzin be a long reliever and a late inning guy. Like, would you look at? He's more he's flexible. Like yeah, <laughs> we like that about Shashi. He can go multiple innings. He can go one. If you can go multiple, you can go one. Mm -hmm. And we prefer to keep certain guys at just one. But he's not one of them. No, no. I like his versatility. Do you have an emergency catcher? I'm Don't you ask that all the time? Huh? Who asked? Who has somebody else? You asked me who's the emergency catcher. I'm not for emergency catcher. Is Jen? No, it's not Jenny. Jenny's opening the story. Yeah. Nobody can ask that. Yeah. Coach's third uh, 
for catching up. Uh, yeah, he's yeah he, he gets with Red, and uh, yeah he's our third catcher. Who? Connor Jones. Oh, Connor Jones. That's oh, if we don't keep three catchers. And what was your question? Emergency pitcher. Yeah. Because last year it was Prentice. Uh, yeah, he had a nice year on the mound. <laughs> <laughs> he threw the ball well. <laughs> uh, I don't know who it is. We got to see who makes the roster. I like. I try not to think about that. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of nice years, Antonio Sensatella was rewarded with a nice contract. Yes. Position. Yes. What were the elements from your point of view that went into that belief in him and the growth you've seen over the last? Couple well, years? you know, a lot of it goes. There's m multiple things, but. You know, his uh, ability to uh, adjust, you know, over the last couple of years, uh, some things on the mechanic side uh, that we felt as though he needed to do, and he did. Uh, you know, his pitch mix, I think, is to the point now where it's solidified, and now it's just a matter of just polishing that off. And, you know, he'll continue to work on things, but... Uh, Health, I think he's going to stay healthy. Uh, you know, then all the, you know, all the character traits, right? Tough, competitor, good teammate, cares about the Rockies, wants to be here. I mean, all those things. So they go into, uh, you know, keeping a player here because of that. You know, he wants to be part of. A, a successful rebound from where he were his first couple of years. Kyle Freeman said something interesting to me about Antonio. He said in 2020, he said he thought, he, to Kyle's words, he thought Antonio kind of flipped the switch. In other words, he took his professionalism to the next level in terms of commitment, fitness, right. uh, study of the game, all of those things. Yeah. Do you, would you agree? agree yeah. I think it started with, uh, yeah, fitness is a good word, I guess, right? I mean, he, you know, his his diet, uh, you know, his, his work ethic, I think, got a little better. Not that it wasn't, not that it was bad before, but he turned it up a notch. And I think all of that, it's, you know, just maturity and, and, and coming of age of of really knowing what it takes and his and his pride of you know, wanting to be a, you know, a really true professional. Hey, buddy. So I'm on marching orders from Thomas Hardy. So, uh, yes, you know I love, yeah, I love that. And uh, also apologize if I, for my never tape, I just ask you dumb questions. But, um, no need to apologize. But uh, I talked to Tapia earlier this morning. Okay. And uh, he, he talked about how he enjoyed left field, but he can play anything. Right. What's your take on it? Where does he fit into the puzzle? Yeah, you know, again, uh, I've said this multiple times to all our guys over the years. You know, our, our minor league player development staff has always done a great job with our outfielders. Once we get outfielders into our system, you know, we move them. Because when, we when they get to the big leagues, we never know where they're going to play. So Ramil feels comfortable anywhere we put him, right? It just so happened it's been predominantly left with a little bit of center sprinkled in and a little bit of right field sprinkled in. So uh, I think we're comfortable putting him anywhere. Uh, the last few years when he's been playing pretty regularly, we've had center fielders who have, um, you know, been on our roster without other outfielders, you know, pushing those guys to the bench. So, you know, whether it's been Hilliard Hampson, uh, Pilar. Uh, I'm probably missing a guy somewhere, maybe, but but he's capable of playing all three, and we're comfortable playing him in all three. Can I piggyback on that center field? That's another thing I'm kind of curious about. Is how is that going to shape up? Is that this is important spring to figure out who's going to be the, yeah. the starter? Well. Uh, 
you know, it might be a combination, right? I left out Daza. I mean, Daza played a lot of center field, and he's a very good, he's above average defender. So, uh, you know, if you look at our roster, there's probably not one guy that, you know, projects to be a, you know, 162 game player in center field. So the combination of those guys I just mentioned, Tapia, Daza, Hampson, Hilliard will probably more than likely man that position as it stands right now. And and we'll figure that out as we go, right? It could be uh, day to day, it could be matchups, it could be who's in the lineup and who's not. But, you know, I foresee that, that position being manned by a number of guys with, you know, Charlie in right field. And, you know, Charlie getting a break in, in DH in a game. Chris in left field getting a break to, to DH or, you know, on an occasion to play an infield position if we so warrant it. But uh, it could be, you know, those four guys sort of battling for, you know, time on the field. But it could be multiple could be multiple positions of, of, the, of the three outfields. Are you going to give Connor Joe a run in right? Oh, yeah, Connor Joe's in there too. In the corners. I'm sorry. Connor Joe in right field, give him a shot there too, as opposed to not just left field. Yeah, yeah, he can play right. First base. Yeah, yeah. Connor Joe, corner outfields, first base. DH, emergency catcher. Okay. In the best of all possible worlds, probably a dumb question. Would you like one guy to grab that center field job and make it his? Well, that means he's like really playing well. Exactly. And it's tough to get the guy out of the lineup. Yeah, I think you always like that. Right. Do you think there's somebody on this roster? Potentially, yeah. I mean, Potentially. yeah. But, you know, that takes, like we talked about, having a really good year. And I, I mean, and that means like consistent. And they only get a blow because they need a blow. But if you ask players, you know, that's the first thing they'll say. I want to play every day. Rarely have I heard. I just want to play half the time. <laughs> I want to be a platoon player. Have you ever heard that one? <laughs> right? No, I don't think I ever have. No. Okay. Good. All right. Thanks.